Folks, and today we're going to finally close uh, this series called Building by Blueprint. How many has got something out of this series, Building by Blueprint? <laughs> it's one of the things I feel like God told us to do. And before we close it, I'll just do a recap quickly for everyone that has not been here. <laughs> Uh, when COVID came through, and even long before COVID, churches have been closing at an alarming rate. And just so you know, we might not, you might not see it. The big churches that you know, the three, four big churches on the corner, maybe are still there. But churches are being eliminated on the regular basis in Sacramento and all over the country at an alarming rate. I work with the group, and that's all they do is study churches that are declining. 71 churches, uh, the ones that are left, 71% of all churches are in a steep decline. They estimate over 450,000 pastors will either be passed away or giving up and walking away from the ministry in Totally, in the next 10 years, we will lose 450,000 lead pastors. And whether you love lead pastors, maybe you don't like them, maybe you think we sketchy, and you all think we got a, a you know, we got my, our mind on our money and the money on our mind. We're all trying to get jets or gold or whatever you're worried. Yeah, why everyone's worried, why everyone's worried in America about what's going on with celebrity pastors. You might just want to make sure half these pastors got enough food to eat because I'm blessed. I'm good. Don't worry about me. I'm, I'm great. But I'm telling you, the guys that I know and the guys that I talk to, they don't get a, they don't get any appreciation. They don't get any honor at all. And when I begin to look at the alarming rate of churches closing, and then I begin to look at the alarming rate of Christians that are no longer Christians. That even some of the older generation, you know the ones that told us you better be in church and you better live right? Even the older Christians are starting to change. And when COVID happened and everyone went online, um, I know, remember that thing that was going around? The devil just tried to close the local church, but he don't know. He just opened up a church in every household in America. That, that was cute, and I really don't, I mean, I was on board like, yeah, real talk, none of that happened. Most of the folks that went online only stayed online, and in America, in this last year, I believe it was, I believe it was either Time Magazine, one of the biggest articles in America, for the first time in the history of the U.S., less than 49% of people even claim Christianity at its weakest form. Less. So I say that to say, you know, we need to rethink what we are building here. We need to rethink, are we just building, hey, man, we'll just all get together and just worship for six hours? I mean, are we just doing our thing? Or are we building God's church by his blueprint? God does not have to honor your nor my idea of what a church is. Yeah, suck on that one. <laughs> Just because you want to do it your way and you see a need for a change, God does not have to honor your nor my idea of what a church is. But he will honor the church that he called to build. And the Bible says, Jesus says, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And all us Pentecostal folks love to go, hey man, that's right. But then why is it? Because it is. The gates of hell are kicking pastors over. Churches are closing on the daily. Uh, if, 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 I, I might sound like a broken record, so forgive me, but for those that don't know, 150 to 200 churches every single Sunday close the doors and lock it and they're done forever. Not to reopen, not waiting for another pastor. 150 to 200. And when you start seeing stuff around you fail, come on somebody. 
when you start seeing other marriages fail, you might want to pay attention to what happened. <laughs> you might even want to ask a couple of questions for your own sake. Hey, I'm really sorry about what happened with your marriage. So anyway, like how to start? I mean, just kind of, because you're, when you see a family just or a business totally fall apart, usually we try to pay attention because we want to know. One of the things God told us at the beginning was uh, three things that God said would be uh, this would be a year of restoration and resurgence. <laughs> and how many have seen that in your personal life? Yes. <laughs> COVID tried to take out the church, but those who remain, God just said, "Oh, you're gonna stick around and fight for this? Well, if you fight for this, I'm gonna fill you up and make sure the eyes of the Lord are searching to and fro, looking to strengthen those He loves." No. Those who strengthen those who are committed to him and committed to his cause. We are seeing, this is not hype, we are getting real stories of mothers and daughters talking and haven't talked in a long time. <laughs> Friends and family coming back together. Relationships that were broken. And how many still has one out there? You're like, yeah, I want to be next. Raise your hand if you're like, set me up. God, see my hand. I want that one to be next. One of the other things God says is that we have to take responsibility for those around us. We'll get to that later. And the other one God said was, I want you to build my house. I want you to build my blueprint. So build, which basically, you know, hey, let's get a bunch of people. Come on, let's start filling up these chairs. How many, we have 200 chairs set out. How many of those, there's about a, even if we got every chair full, how many of those, there's a whole lot more than 200 folks in this town that need Jesus? Yeah. And if, they need, and if they have Jesus, they need a local church to go with their Jesus because maturity is not serving God in isolation. Maturity is not, I serve God by myself. You can't love God without loving his people. Now, I will, I, I will share with you, loving God is easier than loving people. How many of you ever looked at someone and said, you know, I, just saying I love you at your current moment of, you know, flesh. You're like, I love you. Because I have to. <laughs> and because God says I need to. <clears throat> we need to move this along where we care about God's people. And if that is not in your heart, I pray you understand that when we're talking about building the church of Jesus, yes, we are talking about generally, corporately as a structure, what we do and how we do it, yes. But God never does anything corporately in the church as a whole without doing it personally in your heart and in your life. And if you don't have the capacity yet to love people, to love all people, for all you Republicans, you got to love Democrats. <laughs> I know they have their own crazy ideas, but we got to love them. <laughs> if you're a Democrat, you got to love Republicans. Right-wing, egotistical, Fox News listening, gun-toting, Bible-slapping. Yeah. And if Jesus could love your sorry, sad self. Oh, sorry, I apologize. <laughs> too far. Too far. If God could love you and me and our I know we all pretty, looking holy at church. God knows the real you and me. The lying, cheating, conniving, perverting you and me. And if he can love us like that, we got to find a way to love everyone else. No matter what color they are, no matter what political party they are, no matter how they spend their money or how they dress. Why would she come into church like that? Why would you act like that in church? Boom. Roasted. All right. Here we go. So I better jump into this. Apostle Paul's talking in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. He's talking about how to build this church. And we'll be closing this, we'll be closing this message today, this series, and we're going to kind of turn to what's next. And the third thing God told us to do was take responsibility for the love for the people around us that don't know Christ. And that's where we're about to head to next. Apostle Paul's talking here, and he says this in 1 Corinthians 3.10. He says, um, 310, thank you. It says, using the gift God has given me, I did the work of an expert builder. Paul's got a lot of confidence to call himself an expert. He must have been really sure of what he was doing and the way he was doing it. 
That's not arrogance to know what Jesus said to do and to do it with God. That's not arrogance. That's confidence. And we should have confidence when we're following his will and doing it his way. If you're making up the way the church ought to go, God does not need us to create a God nor a church in our image. But we should be learning how to grow and be the church in his image. Can I get a big amen? Using the gift God has given me, I did the work of an expert builder and laid the foundation. And someone else is building on it. But each, Now here comes the warning. But each of you must be careful how you build. Dan Nally, if you're going to be the lead pastor of this church, you better, Dan Nally, receive the warning. You better be careful how you build this. God gave me an opportunity to serve him. God put a vision in my heart to start this church, and we did. And 23 years later, we still standing, still kicking, still preaching Jesus, still got a ton of vision for the future, getting ready to get our new facility. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Reach another 500, 1,000 souls. People get, that's, we got vision. But in the middle of all that, in the middle of all that, we have to be very careful to know our role and to do our part. And we can't build it in a way that we want to build it. It's got to be built God's way. But Dan, now you better be careful how you build this church. I think I'll just get a bunch of my friends who I'm super cool with and you know, like, it's like they just really get my vibe, dude. I mean, I want to get people to get my vibe. I just want to put them in charge. No, I can't build a church that makes me comfortable. I've got to build the church according to God's blueprint. Because if I build it according to what I want, so we're all family, right? Can I just talk the way I want to talk? Ooh, I could get in trouble right here. Mm. This is moments where it's like, Lord, should I say it or should I not say it? I won't say it. I got smart. I won't say it. Here we go. Be careful how you build. Be super careful how you build. Your marriages. My mar Well, you know, I just, she's fine. So I need to marry her. I just need a man that has a job. <laughs> Have you heard that old saying, no one falls in love quicker than someone that needs a place to live? <laughs> you can't build the church. You can't build your family. I just want to, when you are thinking about how you're going to build, how are you building your marriage? Is it on trust? Is it on lies? We'll get to that later. But it says this, be careful how you build. And this is a warning. Apostle Paul is like, listen, I built this thing. I, I'm an expert builder. I have laid the foundation. The foundation is Christ and Christ alone. But it says, he's talking to the people. I've laid the foundation. It is already there. That's Jesus. And then Apollos, he, he's kind of building on it to another Bible character. But then he looks at the people and he goes, now you better be careful what you put on this next. You better be careful how you build this thing next. And it says this. It says, um, some, verse 11, my apologies. Yeah, no, no, verse 11. It says, for God has already placed Jesus Christ as the one and the only. Someone say the one and only. <laughs> the greatest to ever do it. The one and only. Only Jesus. Not persuasion. Not great worship. Not lights and smoke and a fancy preacher. No, the one and only that there will ever be will be Jesus and him alone. And if it's not built on that and only that, whatever comes and whatever storm comes, it will be flattened. So we got to, can we just give God a praise for having Jesus as the foundation of our life? When we have Christ in us, it keeps us strong. When your walk with God is strong, it anchors you to living your life personally on the solid rock of Christ. When I'm living correctly on the solid rock in Christ, it's sure easy to love everyone, care about everyone, not get offended by anyone, not be insecure. And you're talking to the guy that was so insecure I mean, I failed every book report in my life. But when Jesus comes in, and instead of looking at what I'm not and what I'm not good at, I wasn't very good at school. I got a pretty good education. 
I mean, I didn't do very well in school. I couldn't test. But when I made Jesus the Lord of mine and really did it, I didn't say a prayer. I said a prayer and wanted to start learning who he was. I wanted to get to know him in prayer. When Dan Alley started disappearing and I began to decrease and Christ began to come in, I began to like who I was. I began to enjoy the person I saw in the mirror. If you are mad at yourself... Get less of you in there and more in Jesus because you ain't going to get mad at Jesus. Stop getting, stop holding yourself accountable for every dumb thing you did wrong. Well, I'm just nobody. I'm just a failure. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you are. You're a failure and so am I. I'm not worthy. You're not worthy. But he is worthy. <laughs> And when I say I'm a decrease, no, no more me. But let God increase. You'd be amazed what happens to your life. For God has already placed Jesus Christ as the one and only foundation. And there is no other foundation that can be laid. Now watch this. It's talking about Jesus Christ as the foundation. And now it says, you all, you all better be careful how you build. Watch this. Some, when they build, they'll use gold and silver and precious stones in building on the foundation of Jesus. Others will use wood, grass, or straw. So when you've accepted Jesus Christ in your life, you're going to start building your life. You're going to start building your relationships. You're going to start building your family. Start building your friends, your marriage. You're going to start building the local church. You're going to start building ministry. Come on, somebody. And when you do, it says be careful because some of y'all are going to use gold and silver. When you're building on the base of Christ Jesus, you're going to use, I'm spitting good stuff now. It's good. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was one of the protein bars or a piece of tooth, but it doesn't matter. All that matters is this service right now. Amen. I'll hit the dentist later. I'm not sure what that was. <laughs> some use gold and silver, or some will just stand on the foundation, and their next effort will be to build their life out of grass and straw. Some is like, no, man, I got this Jesus in my life. The next step, I want to be honest. I want to love other people. I want to serve other people. You're putting big bricks. You're putting pieces of gold and metal. You're putting precious stuff. You're so enamored by the foundation of Jesus that you have. You're like, I can't put some old grass or straw to build. No, I need some precious. I want to walk in truth. I'm done trying to tell everyone what's wrong with them and just start shedding the good light of Jesus to them. I'm done judging everyone. I just want to love everyone. I'm just going to trust that I don't got to fight with everyone on the internet on everything. I don't got to be mad because I don't know. You see any of them people fighting on the internet that have this big harvest of souls? My goal in, in, the, in the kingdom is not to make a point to the world. I'm going to make my point. I don't want to make my point. My point is of no good. I'm going to make the Lord's point. No, no, no. I don't want to make the Lord's point. The Lord will make his own point. I want to tell people about the good news. Tell them you're welcome in there. I'm not going to fight with people to get a back and forth going so now they can't accept Jesus because I took what God said and used it as a weapon against them instead of a weapon against the devil. That is in them trying to hold them captive. Some of you silver and gold and precious stones at the foundation. Others, grass and straw. <laughs> and these are the people like this. It doesn't matter, man. I accepted Jesus. <clears throat> I don't go to church, but yeah, I mean, he's in my heart. Come on, church. I mean, basically, church is already in me. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> church, eh, Bible study. Come on. I listened to Joe Rogan. He had a Christian on there one time. <laughs> No, Joe, I listen to podcasts. I don't really need. You haven't built anything. You're just standing on Jesus. <clears throat> haven't built a godly relationship, not a godly marriage, not a godly family, not a godly friend. We've just got the foundation of Jesus, and we're like, hey, man, I got him. And that's all we say 
for five years, 10 years, 25 years, and I want to submit this thought to you, all my fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord, Jesus wanted to do more than save you. He wanted to save you and fill you to use you to keep building more people so the body of Christ will be made whole. And before Jesus comes again or before we pass on, more people go to heaven and escape the evil fiery flames of hell. That's what it's about. So how are you building? And then here we go, verse 13. And the quality of each person's work will be seen. The quality of each person's work is going to come out. How do I say this? Go fake in the funk. He's going to find out. When the day of Jesus Christ exposes it. For on that day, fire will be revealed, will reveal everyone's work. Not what we say we have. What we actually have. Not what we say. Anytime you talk to a Christian or if you go to this church and you value me as your pastor and you see me as a spiritual leader, <clears throat> stop watching these people on YouTube. <clears throat> if you can listen to some guy on YouTube you don't know, you don't know what their life is like, you have, don't listen to people on YouTube <clears throat> you don't know to make them be angry at someone that you do know. <clears throat> that didn't go over as good as I wanted it to, but I was trying. If you can get someone on YouTube to make you, well, anytime someone says, I don't have to do that, it's no big deal. I don't know why people freak out about. Doesn't that sound like that, that snake in the garden? Doesn't that sound, every time someone says it's no big deal, you don't have to. I don't know. When I see, now, on the religious sense, I don't need no man to tell me I have to do a bunch of religious steps. Can I get an amen? When I think of Jesus, I'm not thinking, when I'm in a real relationship with God and Jesus, or like we have a relationship with people we love, I'm not looking to do the least I can get away with. I'm not trying to find the bare minimum to get my backside into heaven so my tush don't get scorched. Come on. I'm trying to serve the one I'm loved. I'm trying to be about it, about it, y'all. I'm trying to let my inner holy gangster come out and be about this life. I want to serve him with all my heart. I want to give my whole life to him. And someone's like, well, if I give God my life, I'll lose my life. Newsflash, your life ain't that great. It ain't that great. It ain't, I'm just, sorry, are we just too close? Am I just too comfortable? Your life ain't that great. If your life is great without Jesus, you don't got to listen to a word I say and just give it a couple months, you be back. You be back. <laughs> You know why? I trust how good God is, and I also trust the enemy. I'll just give you time. The enemy will let you know that all the dreams you had, all the ideas you had for the perfect piece of property, and I want to retire somewhere. I don't want to retire somewhere. I want to use my life for the glory of God and make my life count because I only got one. I got this one chance. Oh, my gosh. I got this one chance, this one opportunity in my life to tell the whole world how good Jesus is. Yeah. I got this one opportunity. I don't know if I got five days left, 35 days left, but I ain't giving the devil no more days. I want to serve him with everything I have, and when it's over, it's going to be... <laughs> I just want to I just want to live this thing all the way. And when I see him, it's going to be, hey, hey. Right, right, right. I can't wait. It says on that day, it's going to be exposed. And we know on that day and the final day, it will be exposed. It will be tried by God's fire. But we know, or if I can just sub subject this thought to you, not only will it be tried by God's fire of what you've really built, because you can build with grass and straw and think you built something. How many ever thought you? How many ever thought you had a good relationship until the fire came? Either God's fire came or the world's pressure came. How many ever thought you had a good relationship until the fire came or the pressure came, and then you found out it didn't even stand. 
it just collapsed. So it says this, it says, uh, verse 14, if what was built on the foundation survives, the fire and the builder will receive a reward. But if your work is burnt up, then you will lose it. Wouldn't it be just horrible to work your whole life kind of doing this halfway Jesus thing? Well, yeah, I kind of go to church a little bit, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, like, do anything. I just want to, I want the ticket. I need that get out of hell ticket. Give me that ticket. <clears throat> and when I'm out of money, I definitely want the access to the prayer for the money thing. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> when my life is good, uh, you ain't going to see me at church. <clears throat> when I have money, when my life is good, I'll be vacationing on the golf course, living my dream. But when my life falls apart, Make no mistake, when I fall apart, I'm going to come running back, God. <clears throat> and God's like, uh, one, one thing I love about California, California has this, this lingo. Like, if you ever ask someone a question, like, hey, um, are you going um, to, you going to go watch the game today? And they go, yeah, no, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> That's kind of the way it is. We're like, I want to come back even though my life's a mess. God's like, uh, yeah, no, no, but yeah. I mean, like, I'll take you. <laughs> I love you, but I was kind of, listen, if some of y'all won the lotto, that, that two billion, would you even be here today? Tell the truth. <laughs> would you even be here today? If you'd have won that two billion, would you even be here? <laughs> if God blessed you with, with, if God blessed you with a vacation home, would it pull you out of church? If God blessed your business so much, you had so much money, would, you, would, would God still be the priority? What if I told you that until God is the foundation, not only do you have to be careful how you and I build our life, God's going to try to help his kids not let a bunch of stuff come that will ruin their life, even if they think it's going to enhance their life. All right, number one. Sorry about that. Number one, if you're taking notes, be mindful of what you're building because it will get tested. Be mindful of what you're building, of your relationships, of your walk with God. I mean, be mindful of it. Don't just build to build. You know, like when teachers ask you, did you do your homework? You're like, uh, I mean, you don't even answer. Like, yes or no, you're like, he's making noise. Uh, yeesh. <laughs> kind of. No. Be, be mindful what you're building. When you build something, your relationship with God, how we build our church, how we build um, uh, our walk with God, how we build our ministry teams, how we, how we welcome people to come into this church. And then as they choose, not we choose, as they choose to come and begin to join, they come to the growth track, as they begin to come, the goal isn't to have someone sign up a little membership, fill out a card so you can be a member. Yeah, you're a member. No, no. The, the name on the paper don't matter. It's we want to build a church so when people become members, we take the time to tell them this is what God says a church is. Come on, someone. Yeah. Growth track is not a cute little thing we do just to kind of, you know, well, you know, to have all the other churches do something. No, no, no. We take time in the growth track. Matter of fact, thank you, JD, and your whole team. Thank you. We want to show them what it means. We want to build this church right. We want you to know that God wants you to be a part of a family. And that's your spiritual orphan if you don't have a, a Christian family. God has called the church to be a Christian family. And you don't have to be a member, but if you do, here's what God is asking of you. When you join the dream team, anyone can join. I mean, it's not like some huge thing, but there are things that matter. Can I get an amen? How many of those we should probably know the people watching your kids? How? How many of those, if someone said, hey, who's the new guy in, in, uh, in kid shirt that's leading it? Oh, well, Taylor, uh, our kids director, she, she was busy and Tiff was busy. I, so we call um, labor ready. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, we just we did labor ready. And um, we said, hey, we need someone to teach our kids. And I'm like, all right, cool. And, <laughs> and then they said, How much, what's the gig pay? We said, gig pay 65. They're like, cool, how much of the Bible we need to know? I was like, don't matter, just show up. 
We have candy. <laughs> How many would say, uh, I think it's time for me to leave this church and go get my kids right now? <laughs> so it matters, doesn't it? Yeah. Watch this. Often we hold other people accountable for what matters. When they're watching our kids. And when they're ha- but we don't hold ourselves accountable when it comes the same way. So anyway, be mindful of what you're building because it will be tested. I was trying to think of an example that would really help this. And all I can think of was when we were kids, how we'd build bike ramps. (coughs) Now, I know nowadays, I don't know if kids build bike ramps anymore. They just buy them all. But back in the day, we had vision. And we would just build bike ramps. And I mean, if you grew up in like the 70s or 80s, or you just know we're the reason they made all these new laws. <laughs> we used to blow stuff up, start fires. <clears throat> now nowadays, I think your kid has to be in a car seat till he's 22. <laughs> It's got to be 22. It's got to have the same seat strap on your baby that they use at NASA for the lift off. <laughs> when we were a kid, mom and dad put us in the back of the station wagon, it, yeah. and you just hold on. <laughs> and I think it's a little safer without the seat belt because when you hit something, you just kind of, <laughs> you just kind of fluff. Yeah. Nowadays, it's so intense. So back in the day. When we would build ramps, no one would like, I don't even know if we knew how to build anything right. We would just look around. We was excited and didn't have no money. So we just look around and find stupid stuff. And we just start building, we just start building ramps. Yeah, that'll work. Oh, yeah. That's that's, going to be great. (laughs) So we would would either build ramps so janky like this, and when you get older, you learn a little bit more. (laughs) You realize that you're going to ride into this. This thing's going to break. You're going to hit the can, and then you're going to end over in. (laughs) Or, Or... or we'd build really, really steep ramps, like really steep ramps, <laughs> which had like no natural curvature. It would go like this to this. one of these stupid kids. Just just raise your hand if you're one of these stupid kids. <coughs> and what were we thinking? <coughs> There's nothing in the world like seeing a bunch of 9, 10, 13 year olds down the street with a bunch of makeshift junk like this going, oh yeah, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> Someone's going to the hospital. <coughs> we would just build all kinds of dumb contraptions all the time. I remember one time, me and my buddy, this is actually a true story, me and my buddy, Jason DiMartini, we built two ramps. So after we would jump one, the second we hit, we hit another one. In our minds, you're like, this is going to be so cool. And this is before the days of YouTube or phones or video cameras. <laughs> so all the scars that we have, <laughs> like, I, I'm telling you, raise your hand if you think some of the stuff, if you were, were raised in this era, raise your hand if you think that would have went viral if we had cameras. <laughs> As I start losing my hair, I keep thinking, man, maybe I'll just go bald. Man, let me just, let me just be another white man that goes bald and put glasses on. I mean, every, I just, <clears throat> it's a look. <laughs> And you know why I keep thinking I don't want to do it? God is my witness. I have so many gashes and dents in my head. God is my witness. I have, I have, 
I have a crease. No joke. I'm not exaggerating. If you want to come feel after, you can. I have what seems to be a dent in my head about that long. <clears throat> you ever catch a fish? Anyway, I better stop. <clears throat> These all seem like great ideas. But the problem is you better be mindful what you're building because it's going to be tested. I need a volunteer who can ride a bike. <laughs> PJ? All right, guys, real quick. This is our brand new member, PJ, right here. Clap it up for our man right here. Come on, PJ. Come on, PJ. Come on. All right, PJ. I don't know about you. Is Liam here? PJ and Liam are two of our newest members. Can I just, and this, don't, don't take this the wrong way. Anytime I see young men get serious about God and become members, I know it's going to bless his wife and whole family. I'm just get so excited about these young men saying yes to God. All right. All right. What's up, PJ? And he can, he can play basketball. Where's Jeff? Is the bike back here? All right. Go get that bike. And ride, ride up these stairs real quick. All right. Okay. Uh, prayer team, get ready. <coughs> okay. All right. Yeah, record this. It's going to be great. Hey, record this so the lawyers have something to show at the lawsuit hearing. <coughs> All right. <coughs> now, <coughs> so far, these look like winners. And as we're, as we're building, as <laughs> you guys are so nervous right now. You're like, is he really going to make him do this? <laughs> we're not a cult. Come on. <laughs> do it, PJ. You remember, do it. <laughs> Obey. <laughs> <laughs> These look great. And, <clears throat> and a lot of us <clears throat> have built our lives like this. And when someone says, yeah, man, that ain't ever going to work. <laughs> they look, you ever have people look at you when you're really sure about something? They look at it like, you're crazy. <laughs> and we're like, what are you talking about? That's, that's, it doesn't matter. That's going to be just fine. Where's all my people that every time you get godly instruction? Well, I don't, don't tell me. And, you know, that I serve God the way I want to serve. God didn't ask you to serve him the way you choose to serve him. Newsflash, God ain't here to bless you and serve you. You're here to bless and serve him. And if you don't want him, you don't want him. But if you want him, you'll do it by his terms and you won't do it by your own. He is a holy God and we will every knee will bow, every tongue will confess and we'll do it his way. And when you do it your way, you'll get a tinge of who he is. But you'll never understand the joy the rest of us get for selling out our lives and laying it down. Some of your lives are like this and you're like, it's fine. And the truth is, I mean, I guess for now it is. I mean, I guess just looking at this, I mean, this, you know, it ain't going to work, but okay. It looks like a ramp. Okay. <laughs> Let me finish the message, please. <clears throat> but the truth test, watch. We can argue back and forth that this is a good idea or bad idea. And it's what we do. We judge everyone how they serve God. We, we get mad at people because they won't do it our way. We make big stands. Oh, you can't tell me. Yada, yada, yiggity, yada, 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 yada. Shut up. <laughs> because you can say what you want. I ain't doing this for me. I'm doing this for you. I want to love you. And can I just tell you what my goal is? My goal is to be a pastor that does more than make sure there's money in the bank and we can pay the bills and that we can do all the churchy stuff and take pictures. My goal is that your personal life and this church will learn how to be built. So if COVID-2, COVID-3, COVID-4, Russia, I don't know, economy, don't matter. The kingdom of God will always stand if it's the kingdom. And this is my attempt 
to equip this church and equip you that no matter what comes your way, we'll be sitting right here saying, I got him and he's got me. We can argue all day long if what we're doing is right. How I raise my kids. Don't tell me how to raise my kid. You can stop all the back and forth talking. You know why? The true test is not in your argument. The true test and should I go to church? Is online okay? I don't know why people don't. All this, all that, none of that matters. The real test is not your ability to argue it. And the real test isn't you finding the one scripture. There's a lot of them in that Bible. Most of us just know one. The one scripture to defend why you do what you do. When you get a little older and you've done this for a minute, you just don't even care about that. The true test is not in our argument. The true test is, is this going to hold? When COVID hits, is this church going to hold? If you ever want to know how you did, just ask yourself how you did with God during COVID. Churches were decimated. I mean, people, not this church, I'm so grateful. I'm, so, I'm telling you guys, I'm so grateful. We don't say that I'm so grateful. You kept giving. You kept serving. You kept believing. We kept meeting the best way we could, trying to get through all that. But when the hard times come, you're going to find out if this holds or not. So you can argue all you want to. You can waste your efforts fighting people, watching people online. Some of y'all don't get, some of you guys uh, don't get in fights online, but you like watching them. You know, remember that one with Michael Jackson eating the popcorn? So I'm watching this fight. But none of that matters. Your arguments, my ideas, yours, what really matters is not what you think, what I think, how we twist God's word. What really matters is when the weight of life, of America, of finances, of gas prices, of offense, when God's fire himself, either what you have built in your life will either stand or it will crumble. Waste no time getting in argument. Can't talk right now. I'd love to get in this cute little debate, but God don't care about this cute little debate. What matters is when COVID hits, me and my family are built on this on the rock of Jesus Christ. And when this ramp gets ran over, we're gonna fly like an eagle. We're gonna fly like an eagle. And through the trees, Holy Ghost, they gotta make a Christian. Fly like an eagle. All on my knees, praise the Lord. Okay. First of all, I've never looked that cool sitting on a bike. That's pretty dope. That's, he's just like, best seat in the house right here. All right. Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. Now we shouldn't. Give it up, give it up for PJ, y'all. Give it up. It doesn't matter what you say. It matters when you get on the bike and you're about to test it. Can I get an amen? <clears throat> the idea of the ramp and how you build it seems fine until you test it. And some of that looked really bad. And some of the ramps you see kind of, if you're, if you're immature, like you ever see the long ramp with the, like the first one I built that was super bowing? It kind of looks good until you hit it. You need to know, we got to be careful what we're building because it's going to be tested. Someone to the keyboard, please. It's going to be tested by the world. It's going to be tested by the economy. It's going to be tested by our personal offense. It's going to be tested by how we love or don't love other people. I've already pre-decided about 10 years ago in my life. It just, it's a pre-decision. One of the reasons I rarely get offended, rarely. I mean, I do, I'm human, but rarely. I've just made a pre-decision just to forgive you before you do something stupid. You know why it's so easy to forgive you before you do something stupid? Because I know I'm going to do something stupid. And I'm hoping you'll reciprocate when I act crazy. 
You know what I never do? I'm not saying I'm the model. I mean, hopefully I can be a good example, but I'm not saying I've obtained all that. But I think I got this part of Christianity down. <clears throat> you know what I don't do? I don't take things home with me in my mind to be offended. I don't go home and then text a bunch of people and go, did you see? Because then I give the offense life to grow. I found out that offense is a lot like seed sown. If I give the seed time to get in my mind, it will put in roots and the lie will become my reality. And then I will be thinking everything about every person in the church. Have you ever noticed that God always wants to make you think weird about people in the church? The devil wants you to think everyone in the church has got something. He doesn't want, don't want you to trust it. So you just decide to forgive people. But you don't know what they did. Step number one to not living in offense and anger and frustration. Number one, and this is random, but this might be, I, I prayed God lead me, so here we go. Number one, give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Always. Just give them all the benefit of the doubt. I've had people walk up to me at church and just said, Wow, Pastor, you're really pushing on that one. I walked away. Like, explain. <laughs> I've had people do something mean in passing. I've even had people confess, I've been said some horrible things about you. I'm all cool. <clears throat> but you know why it's easier to pre forgive? Because you just never let the seed get planted in you. If I take it home, I had a guy hit me out front with his car. A guy didn't like me. He didn't mean to hit me. I had a guy hit me with his car. He was mad. He was, he was, I'm sorry. He, he was mad and he, he was mad at me for a while. And the trip, man, he spinned his car. And he, and his, hit the, the mirror on his car hit me and clipped me and knocked me down. And, and a bunch of church people were looking at me like, uh, like, do we pray for him, for you? Do we just pray for the shalom peace? Do we chase him down and avenge? What, what do we do? And I was aware of the moment. I just got done. I'm looking at people, and this is what you got to learn, too, and I feel the Holy Spirit's leading me to say this. Even when you get over things quickly, you've already told 10 people, and even though you get over them quickly, you've already made everyone else mad at another person. So... You ever like got upset, told 20 people, do you know what? You just spread the you just spread the venom, man. And then they're all mad, they're plotting and planning, finding out why, and I, I don't know why. I did you know I tracked them on Facebook? There you go, there's a good use of your time. Yeah, and I went on the social, I made a hidden private account so they didn't know who I I'm secret service for Jesus. I'm undercover. And I found out they were at a party in the Bay Area. Yeah, after they've already did dirt. I don't really think we need to investigate. We kind of figured something was going on, right? Yeah, just, just love, give them the benefit of the doubt. They're hurting. Give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Two things. Just give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Do you know what they said to me? And here's what we always do. After all I've done, we love to stack our righteousness. After all I've done, and I get it, but it's our flesh. We never stack up what they've done for us. We always just say, after all I've done, like we're God himself, just looking down on everyone. Number one, just give everyone the benefit of the doubt. Some people are just going through a bad day, and they're going to say dumb stuff. They call themselves a Christian. Well, yeah, you call yourself a Christian, you won't shut up about it, so. <laughs> Sorry. I may be too loose and too free this morning. Number two, are you building are you building with with silver or straw? What are you building your relationship with God with? Jesus is the foundation. What are you building it with? Straw? It's going to get burned up quick building it with silver what are you building your marriage with dishonesty dishonesty 
Little lie never hurt no one. Well, we'll find out. What are you building your marriage with? What are you building your family with? Well, I, I just told my husband. I just told my family. I just told... Telling people alone is not the loving, slow instruction of God of building. Yelling and telling is not building. I've been preaching for a minute since I was 19, and I found out preaching alone. God may anoint it, and God gets all the glory and all the praise for that, obviously. Preaching alone and yelling alone, even, even anointing, it doesn't always change people's mind. you got to build things. When I was raising my three, I was building a family. I was, make no mistake, I was building it. This may sound, it's going to sound how it's going to sound. I'm blessed, humbled, and overwhelmed by the goodness of God. But at the same time, I'd be lying if I told you what I have with my three kids wasn't the plan from day one. When they were five and six, I had already planned this. What am I saying? You gotta have a vision to build something to go where it needs to go. I wanted kids that got along. I, and, 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 and doesn't mean that they don't get along, you didn't do a good job. You gotta build things. You can't just yell things. Are you building with straw? Well, I told them straw. No, I took, take your child out to the place they want to go eat. Spend some time with them. Look them in the eye. Ask them how they're doing. Tell them you're concerned about their life. Not like in a weird way that makes them defensive. And say, no one loves you more than mom. No one loves you more than dad. Maybe your grandma or auntie, whoever you are. Hey, you're in my care care about you. I want you to know it's important to me. Two things. It's important to me that you know God. It just is. Don't get in a fight about it. If you get in a fight, you lost. You're building something. You're not clashing something. It's important that you know I'm always my mom, oh my gosh. My mom saved my life. For someone to look you in the eye when you're hurting and when you're sinning too. <laughs> And just go, I love you so much. You know what my mom told me one time? She said, I'm afraid the devil is taking you somewhere that I won't be able to get you back. I fear that you're following the devil, which I was, and you're going somewhere that no matter how much mama wants to help, you're going down a path that the enemy is going to take you and I won't be able to get you back. Now she yelled and whipped too, so. I'm... What are you building? Are you, are you, are you building on truth? Are you building, we know you got Jesus, hopefully y'all got Jesus, if not we'll fix that today. But if you got the foundation, what are you building now? Are you building, because if you're building with the fence, if you're building with jealousy, how come no one called me? That's not, that's not honoring the foundation. You're not going to be able to put jealousy on top of the foundation of Jesus and build something strong. Well, I'm just so envious because it seems like everyone else gets a chance and I don't. Well, I've never seen God go, i never seen God reward envy. I've yet to see God reward envy. Well, it just seems to me like, yeah, you might need to talk with someone. Yeah, what, what we always think isn't always true. Can I get an Amen. You need to know if you're trying to build your life on God and what he wants, the enemy is always going to give you a substitute that feels right and sounds justified, but it isn't the spirit of Jesus. What are you building? What are we building this church on? Got to build it on the truth. Going to build it on the power of the Holy Spirit. Going to build it on loving everyone, discipling people, small groups, and the last thing I want to say before we're out of here. Number three, please. Are you building yourself? Are you building others or just yourself? If I went to a pastor's conference 
over and over and over and over and over and over, but I still never wanted to talk to you. <laughs> How many things that would be a bad idea for me? Are you building yourself? I'm reading three books. I go to four Bible studies and a part, you know, I do an online course. I do an underground course. I do one on Skype, Twitter, and MySpace for the old school folks. I do one on Apple and AOL. I'm, I got 22 Bibles, 22 courses. I'm walking in, the, I, okay, I get it. Are you only building yourself? Because building yourself is great, but building yourself is not building the church. It's just building your one part of the church. If you're going to all these other events, it should make you better when you come back to your local church. If you go to a conference, you know, about worship, the goal isn't that you come back from the worship conference going, we do it all wrong. I went to a conference and they said that you need to worship for an hour and a half before you can see the first realm of the glory of God. Okay, well, whatever. I can't, I don't know what to tell you. If you keep building yourself, if it's only you, then you're only building you. God is building the body of Christ. There should come a point where you building you comes to you building other people. Which means you should have a couple people in your life you're like, hey, you keep it up, man. I'm going to encourage you to keep walking the walk. How do we build the church? We love and disciple other people. And we got to be careful because sometimes developing ourselves, you should. Absolutely. Now, I hope I'm going to say this well and you catch the heart in which I'm trying to say it. Only building yourself and never building anyone else can become easy because sometimes we're so intimidated by other people. We'll just keep going to more. How many of us, if I go to 10 pastor's conferences, I had to be 10 times better of a pastor when I get home. I'm not looking for a retreat from Church of the Harvest. I'm looking to go get better so when I come back to church, this is my son. I love every church in the world. God bless them all. If I'm called to speak, we love them. We celebrate them. We're friends and all that. But my assignment is not to go to 20 churches. My assignment is Church of the Harvest. This is my responsibility. So my concern is not to get away from you. It's to when I go, I come back and I'm better for you. I don't get away to escape you. I get away so I can come back and be better at what I do. If you're only building yourself, you have added kingdom value to yourself, and that is amazing. Do it. Thank you. Thank you. Keep investing in yourself. Yes, yes, yes. But don't stop there. Build other people. Build the church of Jesus Christ. That's why we push the growth track so much. It's the connection point. It's where people get to connect. No matter how much we, you know, appreciate our church, people don't just want to go, well, a lot of Christians or people don't just want to go to a good show. They want to be involved. Can they get an amen? They, they, they can just jump on their phones and watch Stephen Furtick today. He, he'll out preach me any day of the week. They want to come to church and be connected. They want a place to grow. So when you talk to people and they're interested in the church, don't just say, cool, come back next week. Say, no, you know what? We want to get you to the growth track. Why is that important? Well, it's important because we want to connect you to join the family. Yeah. It's where we connect. So in the spirit of building, in the next, in the first three weeks of December, we'll be starting Christmas at the movies. If you've never seen what Christmas, let me tell you what Christmas at the movies is. Christmas at the movie is when we take three movies that known movies that people love. And just so you know, there is a big debate on if Die Hard is actually a Christmas movie or not. Every, every hardcore guy knows, like, you kidding me? Of course that's Christmas. Jesus, Santa, Die Hard, of course. Rambo, of course. It's where we take popular movies that the whole world knows and we edit them down. We invite people to come to church 
And at the end, you're going, you're, you're going to get sodas and popcorn, everything a movie has. We'll do it right here at church. This is the kind of stuff we were going to hell for when we were kids, just so you know. <laughs> a hat in the church or a food, you ain't, you ain't going to heaven. Purgatory at least. We're going to give popcorn. We're going to give a bunch of popcorn, a bunch of food. And it's going to seem for us traditional church folks, you might be like, we're doing what? And we'll have some crazy characters running around. We'll have a Santa and some characters. I, I don't think God is intimidated by, uh, by, by Santa. We're not worshiping Santa. We will not be singing any praise Santa songs. We won't change any of our music, but we're going to do three, three of these. And here's the goal. The goal is that people that will not come to church and you've been inviting for a long time, they will come to this when they haven't gone to anything else. And it is my opinion that if you really want to know how to get God's heart and really give him and give Christ what he wants for Christmas, you know what he would really want? You know all them Hallmark movies where the husband comes back on Christmas morning? He likes up in an airport or something and he's like, I love you guys. And he comes back and the music plays, snow falls, they kiss. Oh, Jesus is awesome. <laughs> or like they lose a dog and on Christmas morning there's a little puppy in snow, fluffs his ears. They're like, Bobby's home or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> you know all those big Christmas moments? <laughs> if you had a if you have a child that's estranged from you and not talking to you, a relative. Wouldn't the greatest Christmas gift you could ever get be that child call you and say, hey, I love you, I miss you, water under the bridge, whatever we went through, I'm coming home for Christmas, we're gonna have the best day ever. If you really wanna know God's heart, we believe in honor, we believe in respect, we, we believe in holiness. If you really wanna know what God's heart is, it's clear all through scripture, he wants his lost children home. And you know whose job that is to do? It's ours. So, Christmas at the movies, we're going to do three of them. We're going to do Paul Blart, very spiritual movie. <clears throat> we need some Paul Blart characters, and you the only experience you need is you have to have a little bit of a stomach. <laughs> a little bit of stomach, and you must know how to ride or be willing to learn how to ride a Segway around the church. Paul Blart, Daddy's Home too. Christmas with the cranks. I believe it was before COVID when we did this. I believe we had 113 visitors. 113. How many's ever? How many's been to one of our Christmas at the movies before? How many just left? How many believe the Spirit of God moved when you were there and people got saved? Yeah, it, 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 it actually was pretty powerful. So I want you to take these that are on your chair. I'm gonna have Alex put small stacks of like. 10 to 15 flyers all across the front. I want you to think about who you're going to invite. And then after that, the other side, we're going to be doing a Christmas Eve service. Or my bad, candlelight service. We're going to do one here. It's going to be a candlelight service. It's going to be on Thursday, December the 22nd. We will not be having church the following Sunday. A lot of people will be out of town. We really want to reach the harvest and glorify God. Our goal is to work really, really hard. The day of, I've actually believed that Christmas is a Sunday, isn't it? I believe it's a Sunday. So we're going to do um, one here, December 22nd, a candlelight service. Invite all your friends. It will be a wonderful performance and music. We'll glorify God, honor God, have a candlelight service. They'll also be adding one at our Del Paso Heights campus the next night. So if you want to come to this one, if you want to go to that one, if you live closer, or you just want to go to both, you can. And then that one will also be serving in Del Paso Heights. We'll also be serving a dinner that night for a lot of people who really need, uh, we want to get some fellowship and some time. A lot of hurting families that can really use it. So... As we close up today, it's time to take responsibility. It's the last thing God told us to do this year. We have to take responsibility for the people we love that don't know Christ. 
So as we close up today, I know I'm only going a little long, so forgive me. This is not a Facebook post at 2 a.m. when Sunday morning is the same day. Taking responsibility for the people that don't know Christ around us is not just a Facebook post, you know, twice. Oh, you know, Christmas shopping, oh, quick, I need to. Taking responsibility for lost souls that need Christ, it is a prayerful, intentional effort that is planned ahead, prayed about, and communicated multiple times. Just try to reach people the same way God has been trying to reach us. Consistent love, lots of conversation, lots of welcome, and lots of waving amen. And we're believing the best thing we can give God and Christ Jesus on Christmas is lost people that don't know him. Can I get a big amen on that? Can we give God a hand clap for this whole series and for his word today? actually stay seated. Let me pray over you. Father, I'm so grateful for this church. Father, we want to build by blueprint, not by our print, not by easy prints, not by fad prints. We want to build by a biblical blueprint, your house, so we can walk in the confidence that you will bless it, you will protect it, and that we will be walking with you, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray over every person in the room. As we begin to build our lives, we don't just keep building us, but now we turn and start to build others. We start to reach out to others. We start to love others. We start to minister to others. And I pray you'd begin to put people on our heart. And we don't just have to pray. The Bible says to sow here and there because we don't know what's going to work. So we're just going to start praying, lead us to people, and then just give us the, the faith just to hand out cards and start inviting all kinds of people. God, we'll, we'll, we'll have multiple opportunities, Sunday morning and Sunday night, to watch these movies. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray you would use us to do the last thing you've asked us to really focus on, take responsibility for those that don't know Christ around us. So I pray you open up our hearts. You would make us laser focused God on reaching them we pray in the mighty name of Jesus right before you we end this prayer if you want to accept Jesus Christ or you want to rededicate your life to Christ today's the day just, today is just the day don't no reason to put it off if you want to accept them or rededicate your life it, it, this is more than church attendance it's that you telling Jesus I want to give my life to you. I want to give you a chance to see what you can do in me. If that's you, no one's looking but just me and God. Would you just lift up your hand if I'm ready to rededicate my life? God bless you. One, two, three, four, five, amen. Six, God bless you. Would everyone just say this prayer after me? Dear God, Dear God come, into my life. come into my life. Make me brand new. Make me brand new. Forgive me of all my sins. Of all my sins. I give you my life. Have your, way. Have your way. I believe you are, believe you are. Jesus Christ. Jesus I, make I make you my Lord and Savior. I give you all that I am and all that I have to follow you in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a clap out for you this morning. Come on.